Hey, hey, what's up, my friend? So in today's episode, right, I want to share with you five of my biggest aha moments in trading. So I'm sure you have probably experienced this, you know, at one point or another, watching some video, reading a blog post, and you got a light bulb moment. Ding, right? It's like, you know, man, I didn't see this before. Now I get it, right? So, so yeah, I'm going to share with you my own five of this aha moments in trading. Number one is this, is that you don't have to win often in trading. This means your trading strategy doesn't need to have a high winning rate to be a profitable trader. So this experience came back in, uh, I can't remember the exact date, I'm guessing sometime in 2011, 2012, okay? So what happened is that I am long the dollar yen. I remember it's on the one hour time frame. It's a false break setup on the one hour time frame. So this, well, this is way back, right? Almost nine years, 10 years, right? So I long on the false break setup on a dollar yen and the market pretty much went in my favor pretty quickly. I think uh, when I went to bed that night, right, I was up about one to 1.5 hour, all right, uh, in profits. So, so meaning if I risk, let's say $100, I'm up about $100, right? That's a, a profit of one hour. And the next day when I wake up, right, I quickly check my phone, I realized that my profit, right, exploded, right? Instead of a one hour profit, I'm now up 10 hours. So meaning it's now a thousand dollars profit, right? If I if if I risk a hundred dollars on the trade, now I'm up a thousand dollars, ten times my initial risk. And I thought, man, what's going on, right? And I realized actually what happened is that the BOJ, the Bank of Japan, intervened in the market. So they they bought uh, dollars and sold yen. And it was a massive, huge up spike, and I happened to be caught in the right direction. And that one trade, right, propelled right my account strongly into the green, and that hit me, and that's when I realized, man, you don't have to be making money on every single trade. You don't have to be making money on 70% of your trade, 60% of your trade, because you can make money on, let's say, 40% of your trades. But if you are winners are large, much larger than your losers, you can still be a profitable trader in the long run. So that was my one of my first few aha moments is that, you know, you don't have to win often. But you want to make sure that when you win, right, you want your winners to be larger than your losers. Okay, so this is where uh, we, this is where it's kind of similar to trend following, adopting a trend following approach. So, so yeah, basically, if you are going with this approach, a trend following approach, you don't have to win often. But when you win, right, your winners are usually larger than your losers. Okay, so that's uh, one of my aha moment. Second thing is that, is that you want to trade multiple uncorrelated trading strategies slash systems, right, to improve your trading results. So what I mean by this is that, let's say you, if you trade a solely trend following system, right, where you trade trend following in the FX and futures market, in crisis period, right, you will do pretty well, right, because that trading system takes advantage of, you know, panic in the market, greed in the market, fear in the market. So usually during crisis period, like 08, 09 financial crisis, uh, maybe even the, 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 the 2000 dot-com bubble, right, during financial panic in the markets, right, trend following systems tend to do well. But in normal market times, right, this system kind of you know, go into a dull drop. They don't really perform exceptionally well. So if all of your money is in trend following system, then, you know, what you can expect is, you know, periods of, you know, good money making opportunities during crisis period and in normal times, the system just goes, you know, like a little bit quiet. So what if you actually take some of your money, right, let's say 50% of your original amount of money and put it, let's say, in the stock markets, trading a, a momentum stock trading system. So now things are a bit different because now let's say if the stock market, it's bullish, it's strong, this stock trading system will perform well. And if the stock market goes into a recession, it's in a crisis, your trend following system will do well. So when you combine these two uncorrelated trading systems, your overall portfolio equity curve is actually pretty smooth. It's going to be much smoother, right, compared to just simply trading a trend following system. Make sense? Yeah, so this is a really, I think I would say in for advanced traders, right, if possible, right, adopt multiple uncorrelated trading systems, trading systems that trade different markets. Well, that's a powerful one, Okay. The third thing, you need money to make money in trading. So this is something that uh, took me a few years to figure that out, right? Initially, my plan was that I'm just going to take a $20,000 trading account, uh, trade full-time, uh, make about 20% a year, and I can sustain. But after which it kind of dawned on me that, you know, making 20% a month, uh, that's possible, but I have a huge risk of blowing up my trading account. So after which I kind of realized realistically, nah, that's, that's not really a path that I want to go down into. So I figured, you know, what's the next next best option? So I started studying, you know, uh, successful traders, fund managers, and I kind of realized that when they set up a hedge fund, when they trade, right, they do it with a decent size of money. You, know, you can't 
do it full time or you can't expect to make a lot of money if your trading account is like five hundred dollars a thousand dollars just mathematically speaking you know, you know even if you make like 50 percent a year a thousand dollars account is only five hundred dollars a year so mathematically speaking right you know that taking a thousand dollars into six figures or seven figures unless it's by fluke or by luck right otherwise right you will likely blow up that trading account so if you want to you know make money in trading you need money if you look at warren buffett right he bought a insurance company right and using that company the premium right to actually uh, invest in the market so correct me if i'm wrong i think that's the, the path that he took in his early days of uh, uh investing then if you know hedge fund managers raising capital from the financial markets to set up their hedge funds right why because they need money to make money in trading or investing all right the fourth thing different markets have different behaviors okay so often you heard of the saying right you know rainer the, the market trends 30 percent of the time and 70 percent of the time is in a range and I, I just kind of took that statement at face value right i didn't really look too much into it I thought, oh yeah that's true 30 percent of the time it's trending 70 percent is in a range look at the charts that makes sense but when i do some research and development right behind it and i want to credit to andreas uh unger andrea unger for this uh this technique what he did was that he studied the behavior of different fx markets and he realized that different markets have different characteristics for example the pound dollar the pound yen these are trending markets so how do we define this as trending markets so let's take pound yen for example so what he does is that he did a simple back test and whenever the uh, pound yen break above the previous day high if he realized that this market tends to continue higher or when the pound yen breaks below the previous day low, this market tends to continue lower. And he found out that, hey, you know, pound yen is a trending market. It tends to have a follow through. Whereas on the other hand, let's say the Aussie Canadian, that's a mean reverting market. This market, whenever it breaks above the previous day high, it tends to reverse down lower. And whenever it breaks below the previous day low, it tends to rebound higher. So you can see that different markets, they have different behavior, different characteristics. And if you have access to this information, right, you can actually realize that you can use this statistical data to your advantage right because if you know if you're buying a breakout on the market that is, has a trending behavior guess what the odds of that breakout working out is much higher compared to buying a breakout on a market with a mean reverting behavior yeah so that's one of my aha moment as well right realizing that different markets have different behaviors and finally the last thing is that i realized that some of the best traders out there they have multiple source of income so initially my thought is that you know if you're a trader you can only, you know, make money from trading, right? Otherwise, you know, you're a fraud, right? You know, you're not a trader, yada, yada, right? And I realized when I studied some of the exceptionally good traders out there, those with the, the longest track record, I realized that trading isn't their only source of income, right? They, for example, let's look at market wizards. You have Mark Minervini. He's one of the popular stock market wizards out there, right? I'm pretty sure he's a consistently profitable trader. At the same time, he has a, a subscription fees to his, uh, I think, private feed or something like that. Then he has a weekend training course, right? You can see that he has multiple sources of income. Even uh, income from his books, I'm not surprised. Or how about Ed Sakota, another market wizard. He has some uh, kind of a, a trading tribe. There's a monthly subscription as well. I believe, you know, he makes some money from there as well. And yeah, really, if you just look around you, some of the best traders out there, they don't just make money from trading, right? Trading is uh, just one source of their income. So as much as possible, right? I mean, if you love trading, great, right? But why not use trading, trading, right, to help you develop multiple sources of income? Maybe you have money from trading. You can, you know, go into property investing or whatsoever. I don't know, but just some ideas for you. All right. So with that said, right, a uh, quick recap. Number one, uh, you don't have to win often in trading. Number two, right, you want to trade multiple uncorrelated trading system, right? So your equity curve is much smoother over time. Number three, you need money to make money in trading. Number four, different markets have different behaviors. And number five, the some of the best traders I know, they have multiple sources of income. Okay, so with that said, I wish you good luck, good trading. I'll talk to you soon.